A randomized controlled study is the gold standard for therapeutic evaluation. So how is it done? Randomize, we randomize treatment allocation. For instance, we, if we have more than one group, we do not just allocate them just haphazardly. We have to randomize the allocation, either by closed envelopes or by flip of the coins, etc., because this diminishes risk of unknown factors. Allocation sequence must be random by flip of the coin, dice, computer generation, sequence, date of birth, even odd, etc. Blinding. Blinding, that means you do not always have to know which patient is taking which treatment. So we blind. How do we blind that? This is a key factor for random con controlled studies or treatment. The blinding can be double blinding. The research, and I would say not the patient because this is difficult from our research ethic uh, um, procedures, but maybe the statistician, the researcher and the statistician. This is double blind. Blinding the evaluator or research uh, of research outcome, researcher, or the investigator who writes the results can be blinded. They should not know which is the test group and which is the research uh, um, group. All right, a case control study involved in identifying substance with clinical conditions or cases and sub subjects free from clinical conditions or controls. And then the cases and controls are observed or have are uh, evaluated retrospectively, retrospectively, determining if the two groups have had similar or different exposures to risk factors associated with the disease. For example, vaginal cancer in young women and the use of diethyl silbesterone during pregnancy by their mothers. So how is this? They ask the daughters with vaginal cancer whether their mothers used this drug during their pregnancy. But actually this has a uh, drawback because it relies on memory. There is a recall bias. Now, an example of a cohort studies. A cohort study, there are subjects known to have been exposed to treatment or causal agents, they call them cohorts, versus non-exposed subjects. Observation is carried out prospectively to determine whether a disease will, de will develop. The advantage is that it's ethical, a potentially beneficial treatment is not withheld, and a possible harmful treatment is not given. The disadvantage, the sample size needs to be extremely large, but it is the best design for studying prognosis, diagnosis, and causation. Example of a well-designed cohort study, smoking as related to lung cancer. Now this study has be, been carried long way, a long time ago, that involved 40,000 British doctors and four cohorts, four cohort groups, non-smokers, light smokers, moderate and heavy smokers. The duration of observation is 40 years duration from 1951 up till 1991. And the follow-up was 94% of the follow-up cases were preserved. The results established the causal link between smoking and lung cancer. A cross-sectional study is the observation of a defined population at a single point in time or a specific def definitive time or a specific time interval. It can only uh, establish an association but not a cause and relation or a cause and effect relationship, only association. But it, does, it is not, doesn't uh, uh, give you any idea about cause and effect relationship. And as cross-sectional studies only can determine association. A longitudinal study, a longitudinal study is a variation of a cohort study. But however, there is only one group. Example, subjects with positive screening of a marker or early disease. 
and then repeatedly, prospectively evaluate to assess development or course of the disease. Experimental studies, intervention is under the researcher's control, the controlled or uncontrolled. This is a weak evidence, not used to guide practice. Early exploration, it only tells you early exploration of safety, pending more definitive trials. Historical control groups is weak. Factors may have changed since data was, was gathered. The case reports and case series. The description of a rare disorder or adverse effect of an intervention, it only allows a hypothesis to develop leading to focused studies of stronger design. So these are not strong um, studies, but they just tell you that there is a case which is rare or multiple cases, few cases which are rare, and few, in future researchers well, uh, uh, we will allow hypotheses to develop, uh, leading to focus studies with stronger design. All right, what is the confounding variable? Very important. All right, now, we've seen this before, the pyramid, which tells you which is the highest, which has, which research has the higher level of, of evidence. Number one on the top is meta-analysis, and systematic reviews. Now, they are secondary pre-appraisal or filtered studies, right? That you take uh, many primary studies, we filter them, and we do the appraisal through meta-analysis, whether it is statistical or systematic reviews. But the studies which were selected must be homogeneous. Then also the RCT or randomized controlled trial come, comes next. There are prospective tests, treatment, all right? And next, the uh, less uh, uh, valid is cohort studies and followed by case controlled studies. The least are case, the, the least uh, believable or the least relevant are case reports and case series because there is no design narrative reviews, expert opinions, editorials, it just gives you an idea, but has no uh, scientific evidence, no, not, not, no strong scientific evidence. And animal and laboratory studies, um, it, they are just something to, or some studies to indicate that they may have some uh, um, importance, but we should not uh, take them uh, seriously unless they are uh, um, presented in more reliable research studies like uh, meta-analysis, systematic review, and RCTs. Now, there is the three dimensions of evidence-based decision-making. making A scientific evidence, experience and judgment, clinical patient circumstances, and patient's preference or values. Also, the patient should not be omitted. The patient, uh, if you want to um, um, introduce a treatment to a patient, we have to put into account the patient preferences and also values, um, like endogain. Endogain, for instance, is made of uh, a pig, uh, um, heart, heart with epithelial sheath. Some patients, for instance, religiously would not want uh, such a thing to be implanted into their own bodies. Okay. 